I'd like to start off this video by saying that I believe it's a lot easier for a graphic designer to learn motion graphics compared to a video editor. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that statement. And the reason why I think this is because motion graphics is consisted of two parts. One, you must create the still graphics, and two, then you animate those still graphics. And when you watch tutorials on motion graphics and After Effects, it's always about how to use the software in like a step one, step two, step three process. However, the principles behind the techniques are never shared. So in this video, I hope to change your perspective on motion graphics by thinking like a graphic designer. We're gonna be talking about three vital topics when it comes to design, which is typography, layout, and colors. And if you can master these three design skills, your motion graphics are gonna be among the best. So let's jump in and design some awesome stuff. All right, so the first principle we're gonna talk about is good typography. So for example, we're starting off this design with some very simple fonts and it does not look good. So for example, the title design here is extremely weak and doesn't catch anyone's eyes. So essentially what you need to know about typography is the three different font families. So there's only three font families that I focus on and which is sans serif, serif, and script. And it's all gonna depend what style that you're going for for which type of font family you're going to choose. Sans serif is generally gonna be very flat across all the letters in the type. Serif fonts are going to have these extenders at the end of each letter and script is simply going to be anything that is cursive so that's the first thing you need to identify what's the best style for your motion graphic so we're using the typeface Arial, and i want to make this font actually bolder or black so this will help make things stand out so by changing the font to black our main tiles here are standing out and it's much easier to read than it was before However, there's a lot of sans serif fonts out there. For example, I can use a typeface called Peace Sans. It's good to go through different typefaces to get a creative look. When it comes to other titles that may not be as important, uh, it's good to create a little bit of contrast there. For example, maybe instead of using the Pete Sands font, well, maybe we'll go to Mastra and I can scale this down. So here's a before and after. So this is what we have previously and here's what we have now with the changed fonts. So typography has a massive role into what your overall graphic is gonna look like. It's just important to know the different fonts uh, and understand that your main titles uh, should be easier to read, should be standing out, can be bold and your smaller titles that are not as important uh, should be smaller or thinner in weight. All right, so by default, this looks really good, but what happens if you have additional graphics and what if you don't wanna center this in the middle of your composition? There's really no wrong answer where you position uh, your entire layout of your motion graphic. So we'll go ahead and talk about some ideas on how you should approach layout. When it comes to layout, the main principle to take away is being able to control your viewer's eyes and understand that we typically read information from left to right, like when you read a book. So for example, if I write a line these group of titles here is a little harder to read because the alignment is all on the right compared to if I left align this now it's going to be a lot more simple to read because we're reading from left to right and we have that nice consistency uh, of design so when it comes to your main title which is going to be these two right here in the center I want our audience to really pick up on these first and I want to organize the other information in a very balanced way and one thing we do is come here to this crosshair icon and click on title action safe and I'm going to move these titles over here to the left and I'm going to use the title safe just as a point of reference of where I want to position these titles. And I don't want to keep these two blocks as titles centered because it doesn't read correctly. So, so I'm going to make sure that both of these titles are left aligned. And now that reads really well. And I can make sure that the other graphics fit this concept. So the reason why we use title safes isn't necessarily for graphic design when it comes to uh, creating videos. It's more of a broadcast guideline. So if this is going to be aired on TV, what I know is that everything outside of the box here uh, will be cut off when it's broadcasted live on TV. I've been out of loop for a very long time, so I'm not sure if that's still how it works today. Uh, but if you post this on YouTube or whatever, you're not gonna lose the detail outside the box. So that's the idea behind the action safes, uh, but it's what I use as well to just have some standard. Now, what about the rest of the titles? I mean, we could do a lot with this. We can just basically put them anywhere, but I wanna be able to create some level of balance among our uh, composition here. So for example, I don't necessarily consider titles like this as titles, but as extra graphics to create some extra level design. So I can just position these titles to each corner of the title safe. But, and by using the title safe as a standard marker, we're gonna be able to create some beautiful balance in our composition. So there's really no concrete rule on what you can do for layout when it comes to design. Ultimately, I just keep in mind what you want your viewers to read and specifically read first. All right, the last principle we're gonna talk about is color and how to effectively use color very easily. So 
In this scenario, we have the maximum amount of color contrast that is possible. And really there's no color yet because it's just black and white, but it is impossible to have a higher level of contrast because this is pure white and this is pure black. What happens if you need to implement color uh, into your project? So for example, we look at this scenario here, this has a much lower level of contrast and is nowhere near as appealing as before because one, there is no definite white level or black level. So a good rule of thumb is to make sure that there's at least a maximum white, which is gonna be this maximum hex code of six Fs or have a maximum hex code of black, which is gonna be six zeros. Have one or the other or both if you wish. So in this scenario, it doesn't look as good because the contrast has been lowered. But if we look in this scenario, the contrast definitely has been lowered because we don't have black anymore. Even though we have less contrast in this scene compared to here, it's still going to look good because we have pure white. So what happens if you need to introduce a primary color into your scene? Well, it depends on whether that's a bright color or a dark color. So in this case, we have a very bright yellowish background. So anything that is white text is gonna look terrible. Vice versa, if this was a dark yellow background, any text or graphics that are dark are gonna look bad. So you need to keep that in mind so you can create further contrast. So to correct this contrast, we can make all the titles and graphics black and now this automatically stands out. However, one thing I wanna take a look at here is our uh, white box titles with the black titles. So the black titles look great. However, the white boxes don't look that great because we have this bright yellow touching the white and then the black looks fine because we have the ultimate color contrast there. But what I would do is I would make the boxes dark and make sure the text stays white. Because now we have the bright yellow, we have the dark boxes, and then you have the bright white text and you have that beautiful contrast. And just to be clear, you can break some rules here. So for example, the title here in the right corner, which people are not gonna notice that much. I made it similar to the yellow that we're using, but made sure that it was darker. Uh, it's just a cool way that you can play around and you know embed some of the rules here, for example. And even the boxes, you have that tint of yellow into it, but it's very subtle. As long as you're understanding how to create good color contrast, you can you know, add hints of different colors into your work uh, and it can add a very subtle variation uh, to what you're doing. In the close out of our video, if you're looking to save time while producing awesome motion graphic work, be sure to check out our motion duck extension, which is this panel right here, which allows us to preview templates and apply them right into our project with a click of a button. And once the template has been applied, you can go ahead and edit your template however you see fit by changing colors. And you can quickly edit the text and other parameters available to that specific template. And within under a minute's worth of time, you can have your project completely finished uh, by using one out of our thousands of templates available for Motion Duck inside of After Effects and Premiere Pro. So if you want to check out all the templates that we have and download our free After Effects and Premiere Pro pack, go ahead and check our links in the description below. So these are my design principles that I've been following for years and kind of how I think about graphic design in motion graphics. It's a pretty safe bet to follow the guidelines, but it's up to you to understand what you're doing and being able to form your own style to help you stand out in the marketplace. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below if you wanna watch more content like this where we break down you know, more theory and principles. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content like this and always be creative.